Hi, watch friends. The Bob's Watches team is back because today we're talking all things Rolex predictions for 2024. Now, before we get into this, I'd like to say hello to the team. Hi, Justin. Hi, hello. Brandon. Hey. Hi, Ripley. You guys hello. doing okay? Yeah. Good Great. To be yeah. Here. Life is good. I'm happy to see you. To yeah finish out this year and yeah. kind of usher in the excitement it's of nice what's... nice to see everyone at once. I know, yeah. we've been popcorning in between yeah. filming sessions, so it's nice to be here all together. It's be good. Yep. It's, it's a special treat for us all. So before we get into our round table, um, I would love to see what you guys are wearing on the wrist. What's your wrist check today, Ripley? Uh, I am wearing the Whoa. code 1159 from AP, but this is the white gold version. Nice. So uh, yeah, non-obvious choice. You don't see these out in the wild. No. And it's one of those watches where if you don't see it in person, you probably think it's really boring, but then you see it in person, you're like, oh, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. It looks good on you. Yeah. It's very unique. I really don't see that a lot. I was gonna say, wild. yeah, in the category of don't see every day, that's yeah. that's pretty high that's up there. Which well, I the like. Royal Oak's super cool. I'm just so against the Royal Oak being AP's only design concept. So sure. I'm gonna go ahead and champion the, uh, what's often the overlooked. Model I like it. Catalog. Yeah, I like that. What about y'all? So speaking of new Rolex, mm -hmm. do the celebration hey. dial 36 millimeters since it was new this year. Mm -hmm. um, a little inspiration for uh, for our predictions for next How year. Fun. So you're never in a 36. I know, I'm not in a 36. And I've even said before, uh, well, I kind of like the design of this one. It's not something I'd really wear, but you it's know, fun. I have been wearing it a little bit and I do like it. Yeah. So yeah. it looks fun. Yeah. 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 Brandon, like what do you got? daughters would love that. Oh, they would absolutely love that one. That's really cool. Uh, I've got on a GMT 1675 with a fuchsia bezel. Catch uh, that dial from yeah. a mile away. Yeah, it's uh, the fuchsia's really grown on me lately, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, that, how about you, Emily? That's a fuchsia for the stars. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank I you. have on a Rolex Cellini. Very, nice 18 very karat Emily. yellow gold. Very Emily watch. Actually, the fun part about this, aside from the gold um, Roman numerals, I, I really like the design of those on this. The, uh, you see the hands too, they're gold as well. Oh, the yeah. text is gold. Mm -hmm. Everything here is gold except the strap, but um, it's 31 millimeters. Mm, so this is a little bit smaller than what I normally wear and it feels really great on the wrist. So kind of a fun, eclectic yeah. uh, wrist check for us here. You guys at home, what are you wearing while watching? Be sure to chime into the comment section and let us know. I love seeing the variety that you, yeah. everybody else kind of is wearing for this yeah. season of watches too. All right, 2023 was a big year for Rolex. They ushered in a lot of new things. We saw a case back display on a Daytona. How fun was that? Yeah. They ushered in an entire new range of watches with the 1908. Big fan personally there. They also said farewells in the Milgauss and a majority of the Cellini line. So I'm excited to kind of get into what is in store for 2024. What is Rolex going to do? You know we all know it's going to be something Who knows? minor. Yeah. Maybe something not so grandiose, but for the sake of predictions, we're gonna have some bold ones, we're gonna have some realistic ones. So we're all gonna bring one prediction kind of to the table and have a nice little conversation about it. Yep. How does that sound? Great. I'm That's excited fun. for it. Should we get it. into it? Okay, yeah. who wants to start? Justin, I feel like you're, start. you're most prepared. You I got, will start, yes. Um, what are you thinking? So to start off, like you said, it's maybe something subtle, which mm -hmm. has been pretty Rolex over, you know, as, as time has gone, I felt yeah. like, you know, that they make small changes, small adjustments, mm -hmm. nothing really drastic. Yeah. But as of late, the last few years, like you said, they've done some bigger things, some, uh, you know, more dramatic changes and things. I mean, I mean, wearing one of them on my wrist right now. Yeah. Um, so I feel a little more confident that we might see something a little more exciting. So for me, I mean, I got a few things in mind, but I'm gonna say they are gonna do a GMT with Coke bezel. Ah. I think it's time to bring back the Coke bezel. You're going more. We realistic. haven't had it in ceramic yet. Right. We, you know, yep. it's, it hasn't been since the you know the older aluminum bezel. Um, classic, classic version of the GMT mm -hmm. that I felt like has been missing for a while. And you know, they did the Sprite last year mm -hmm. uh, in the with the left-hand configuration, which I, I love. I think it's great. Um, so they are kind of doing some new things with GMT, but. Yeah. I think it's time to bring back the Coke. I think it's, wow. it, it's uh, they've been sitting on it for a little while and I mean, we will see that sometime. They're yeah. going to bring that back. Yeah. I would love to see a Coke GMT, but Rolex, the red ceramic is hard. Uh, think about how big of a deal Hublot makes over sure. their red ceramic. Right, and cool. those brighter colors in ceramic are harder, inherently harder to do. Mm. If you look at the Pepsi bezels, um, Rolex isn't awesome at those. You sure. know, the, the red's a little bit purpley, Changes. the blues, and there's a lot of inconsistencies when you look at how mm -hmm. long they've been making it and which isn't all that long in Rolex's history. Right, right. I think doing a bright red and black bezel, they want to do that, but they're gonna wait until they get it down to do that. Oh. Plus they've been doing some other stuff with the GMTs. I'd love to see it, but I don't know if we will this year. I just don't know if they have the red production of ceramic down enough to roll out 
a whole nother bezel color that also uses red. Right. See, and it makes me wonder if they've been having problems. Is this why they've been having more fun and trying out other color, like uh, duels? Well, I think some of it is they got the reputation for being boring, and, and, and Rolex is, you know, right. as, as prolific as they are, and as you know, we don't like to bow to consumer requests. They also sell watches to the public. That is what they do, sure. and no one wants to be boring. And we've seen Rolex be more colorful. The Celebration yep. dial, mm -hmm. the off catalog puzzle piece day date, even just some of the other options like putting a display back on the Daytona. Um, but Rolex also makes boring decisions and sure. expected releases. So I think you might be right. We will get something fun, but I also think we're gonna get something totally expected, totally not that yeah. interesting, but a core collection offering. And that's why I think we'll see a two-tone version of the 40 millimeter Explorer. Oh, are you pulling out your prediction yeah. right now wow. yourselves? What a, segue. what a segue. There we are. Wait, really? Well, look, we have, they did a 40 mil in steel. Wow, I'm mind blown. I haven't thought of this one. I, it just is like a weird hole in the catalog. You know, they've got the 36 in steel and two tone. A two tone 40 mil would kind of make sense for anyone who liked the 36 and just thought it was a little small. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the antithesis of the one we're all going to be talking about, but I probably think that it has mm. a large demand. And I could easily see Rolex saying, well, we have all the tooling. Let's just go make that two tone version. It makes sense that yeah. they would yeah. have it, right? It's, yeah. it's kind of. Odd that they don't. They have it in the 36, but not in the 40, yet they have the stainless. Which is and a very different wear on the wrist. Those are not the same watch. Yes, the exact same, but technically not right. the same. Right. They, at they all. wear different, they present different. Oh, yeah. um, that would be interesting to see. I, I would not personally like to see it as much. That's just more of a personal, uh, uh, a like personal ask, I guess, because the 36 two tone isn't one of my favorite watches. Um, but I could absolutely see Rolex doing it. Yeah, that's a good call. I would like it. Is that bad to say? Like, I love that watch in 36. No, I would good. love sort of that bigger option to just be available, you know? Yeah. And two-tone, I've told you, I, I've had a year for two-tone for myself. And it sort of fills a hole in Rolex's catalog as mm -hmm. far as a non-bezel-oriented two-tone sports watch. Yeah. So you can't get the Explorer 2. They've been kind of flirting with the idea because you can now get the GMT in two-tone with yellow gold sure. again. But again, we're talking about bezels on it, same as the Samariner, same mm -hmm. as the Sea Dweller. Yeah. For someone who wants a more traditional watch but doesn't want something more dressy like the mm -hmm. Datejust, Two-tone Explorer and 40 mil makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yep. Wow. It's not exciting. It's not going to be the one I'm lining up to buy, but it just makes it. But at the same time, it makes sense like a rose gold, you know, two-tone Daytona. And yet we still don't have one of those sure. yet. So, okay. Well, then let me ask this? you this. Yeah. Do they keep the 36 as well? Of course they do. They do. Of course you they do. You have to. Yeah. You come on. They, well, we've seen them go back and forth between, you know, it was. They wouldn't have dropped it after this many years. 40 it, to 36 yeah. to 39 and you know. They're still producing that's... parts for that watch from the first announcement, right. I'm sure. Right, and that just came out the, the 36, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, 2021 or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a pretty a new soon, watch. But yeah. you never know. Wow, you said Everose with the Daytona that we haven't seen this yet. And this actually takes me to my prediction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is it? Um, so you guys know, I love the Cellini. It's always pretty much on my wrist in some variation or another. When the 1908 came out last year in 2023, um, I was surprised that they're having a lot of fun with the GMTs. They're having a lot of fun with the OPs. Um, the Cellini felt like an artistic sort of array of watches for me. So Cellini goes goodbye, mm -hmm. 1908 gets introduced. It was very refined. It was very uh, simple, black and white dial, only in yellow gold and white gold. Mm -hmm. And it was on a black leather strap. So this was their official dress mm -hmm. watch, right? Cellini really kind of just got replaced with another dress watch. I just think the expansion of this is gonna okay. be very subtle in 2024. I think they're just gonna open this option to rose gold. Super simple. I think you're gonna get only black and white dial options. I think it's gonna stay on a strap. I would love to see a bracelet thrown in there. Kind of like harkens back to a little bit more of that dressy vibe when a strap just doesn't fit. But if I pare this down to just one focus thing, I truly think it's gonna be a rose gold option. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I like that. I would like to see the 1908 yeah. in a rose gold. Um, I like, you know, I go back and forth between yellow gold and rose gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's, they're both good, right? Like I like to see, uh, I'd like to see different options. So um, I, I would welcome that. I think it would be really nice. It's it's classic. It fits. Um, I think the bracelet is less likely. I, I think know, they'll. I know. That's more probably like a wish than a prediction. Look, but I, also, I I would be on board. I really really wanted to sh like maybe like 
park in and open the doors to a uh, moon phase complication Ooh, on the 1908 yeah. as well. I just think it just adds to the ornate details and kind yeah. of just the, the beauty of all of it right. together. I would, I would And they could work that. that in so amazing. So I want to see Rolex go really hard with the 1908 because they now have this platform that isn't a sports mm -hmm. everyday wear watch. True. And that's what Rolex cut its teeth on. Sports watches, models like the Oyster Perpetual, the Datejust, they're mm -hmm. sports adjacent. You can wear them swimming, whatever. Uh, but the 1908, they've revived a collection that isn't that oyster case, water yeah. resistant yeah. tool watch, if you will. I want to see them go super hard, all the complications. Now mm. they have a platform to do that. So like you said, the moon phase, Rolex doesn't really make complicated watches. We've got the Sky Dweller, the Yacht Master 2. Mm -hmm. I would love to see them go really hard with the 1908. Not just a rose gold, but just use that as now a platform to debut a triple calendar, a moon Ooh. phase. Yeah. Do some of those old plays on some of the old models like you know the Data Compacts, the Kilkilly, like some mm. of those where it's, yep. it's not a revival of the old model, but it's a nod to that in this 1908, which itself is a vintage inspired yes. sure. dress watch. Yep. And for Rolex, they cut their teeth being a tool watch manufacturer. Today they are the world's most famous luxury brand. Uh, just like I'm a champion of AP not just being the Royal Oak, Rolex needs to be more than just the bracelet mm. watch brand. Right. And I think the 1908 is really important for them going forward in the future. And I just want to see them lean into it and go hard, not that wishy-washy way they treated the Cellini. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I Cellini deserved a little bit more. So maybe the 1908 will be the one that Cellini's yeah. paved the way, the 1908 actually gets to experience I feel like it. the Cellini was getting there too. Some of True. the last Cellinis were my favorite Fantastic. Cellinis, right? Oh, yeah. that, the one with the moon face, that, that rose pretty, gold. Yeah. Might be my favorite Cellini of all time. And uh, you know, they have the date subdial on a, mm -hmm. um, one at the same time, mm -hmm. the white gold. Those I think were some amazing Cellinis. And if those are here and they just pushed a little further, like Ripley says for that 1908, I think the sky's the limit on some yeah. of the amazing stuff. They I think I'm do. most excited about that like range yeah. as a whole. I mean, it's brand new. So the the sky's the limit at this point, yeah. right? You know, they're not gonna take any of those that are were available away so soon. Right, Hopefully, but you never know. And there's no precedent I for shocked. it. It can't contradict itself. You know, I think part of why the Cellini struggled was it had such a bizarre fractured identity yeah. throughout the years that like, what is what is the Cellini to customers? Yeah. It didn't have an identity. With the 1908, it's a fresh blank slate for Rolex. Uh, it's based on historical models, obviously, and there's some very heavy and vintage inspired nods. Mm. But whatever they do going forward, it's not contradicting itself. It's not like putting a date on the Daytona where people are gonna lose their minds and say it's blasphemous. The 1908 can't contradict themselves. If they want to do a moon phase, a chronograph, right. a, a dual time, some weird yes. travel time complication, there isn't a historical precedent yeah. that they'd be betraying by doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really interesting opportunity where for the first time in years, they can kind of do whatever yeah, they, they want. They have that leniency yeah. to yeah. kind of... I like that. So if they have this range, it'll be exciting to see what they decide to do. Yeah. I'm going to say, if they do a rose gold, mm -hmm. I think they might offer a brown dial. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, that would look good. I think because we Ooh, see a lot of rose and brown in the underline. So I think maybe they'll open it up the three dial. Like a chocolate? The Day Day 2, they have that, it's a, like a chocolate dial and it has the diamond motif mm -hmm. pattern on it in a rose uh, gold. Yes. That I think is a gorgeous date. Yeah. It's something like that. See, the Day Day 40 last year that had that, you called it the Argyle pattern. It's yes. yeah. that uh, ice blue, like platinum uh -huh. um, blue. Then it was in, we had it in black, I think, yep. in a, what, what's like a in the box. like a texture. Yes. That, classic design with those subtle details to me. It's such a s standout from like the stone dials and those ornate things where it's subtle, but still very, very, um, I don't know, luxury. Like it's unique, it's different. That is fun to me. If they take that stuff to the 1908, I will be delighted. I will be delighted. I could see that. Um... It's Just a lot. In so far as they've been doing that more as of late in terms of interesting dials. I mean, we yeah. see, we get a lot of watches in, we get a lot of older watches in, and we see a lot of things like tapestry dials, yeah. linen dials, burlwood dials, mm -hmm. pyramid dials, just all these things that were, you know, a very interesting design that Rolex did for a short yeah. period of time, kind of something that didn't stick around forever. Mm -hmm. um, now it almost feels like they're kind of coming back with some of that. Not necessarily yes. re-releasing those, but just the, the idea and the creation of little more fun, interesting dials. We see, like, talk about the celebration dial. Mm -hmm. uh, Ripley talked about the off-catalog puzzle. My favorite, the palm dial. And I think the what this dial. was, was True. they just, everything became a sunburst or a gloss dial, and it became a little too monotonous. Sure. I mean, we the sunburst dial is beautiful. We always, it's very characteristic of Rolex, but, you know, it, when you look at a bunch of sunburst dials side by side, it's a very, very similar vibe, especially when you apply it to Rolex's consistent design mm -hmm. language. You switch up from a radial sunburst pattern to a crosshair motif 
tapestry, what have you, all of a sudden it's a very different aesthetic. And that was part of the reason why I love the palm dial. I mean, mm -hmm. It's a date just in every single way, but it's not a date just. Look at that green leafy creation. Right, it's very, yeah. it's the same, but it's also very different. Yeah. yeah, so I love that. And I kind of feel Rolex going in that direction and I welcome it. I think it's, it's really exciting. So I wouldn't be surprised to see just as, not like official prediction, but just like as a general overarching theme, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me to see some more of those, which I welcome. Yeah. I, yeah, I see more fun dials, but I also see the one you're wearing not being a standard offering. Mm. I could see that I too. I could easily see them discontinuing it this year. It's too weird. It's it's a celebration. You don't celebrate something uh, for more than one uh, year. You know what I mean? It's that like, was on my short list of predictions. <laughs> uh, I, you know, we had to narrow it down to one, but yeah, absolutely. To. They have to at that point. So then where does the fun go? It'll be interesting to see. Right. Do they keep it subtle on dials or do they expand this into something yeah. well, you I can't think even predict? We'll see a high-low with the fun. Historically, it's always been the day date that was like Rolex's creative play. Mm -hmm. Where you'd see these fun stone dials, these kind of more whimsical configurations. Um, but I think what the Oyster Perpetual color dials from 2020 showed us is that people want fun at a broad range of prices. So sure. I think rather than it mm -hmm. just being these weird precious metal date justs, day date models that get these unusual dials, I could easily see Rolex doing it more with the steel date just, the Oyster Perpetuals. Yeah. Maybe not the same bright colors, maybe a pattern, maybe some a little bit of fun, different markers or something. But I think we'll get touches and splashes of fun at all different price points. But some of the that. weird wonky stuff like that, where it's gonna kind of peter out. And you just reminded me, can I throw out, how amazing is the fluted motif dial oh. that's on the, that's been out recently. Oh, it's nice. Love. The blue, Which the green. Color oh, do you green. prefer? I, I love the green, but even really? that blue is so. Can I be the I weird choose. one? It's the gold one with oh, that wow. fluted uh, bezel. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, only Emily. It is nice. I get the, I get the appeal, but I like that. I just think uh, the wearability of it more for me. Come on, you know the green and the blue are. Green, perfection. green, gold, Ripley. So for me, uh, green's my favorite color. I like the palm, but for the blue, for the yeah, blue good. fluted. It's With the fluted bezel on a Jubilee, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I'm so good. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Green, gold, mm -hmm. blue, fluted bezel, or so fluted maybe motif dial. Like gold, yeah. just, just go ahead and agree with us and tell us Emily's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, it wouldn't be the first. All right, Brandon, I'm dying to hear. What is your prediction? Um, I'm thinking long and hard about this. Okay. Um, I don't know if it'll happen. Probably won't happen. Are you going but... bold or realistic? Uh, I'm in the middle. Okay. I would say maybe, I think, I'd like to see them bring back the Sea Dweller 40 millimeter, okay. but okay. in titanium. <gasps> Ooh, that would Continue be the such titanium a cool watch, train? but it's, yeah. it's, it's too cool for them. Yeah. It, it's too cool for them. <laughs> they're not gonna make a Sea Dweller that's smaller than the right. sub, and they're also, like a titanium Sea Dweller makes so much sense, it would be so cool. They're not gonna do that, you know what I mean? They're just gonna be like, we're gonna give you titanium, but it's gonna be like in a Yacht Master, and a right. Yacht right. 2, and a bunch of stuff you didn't uh, ask for. How perfect would that be though, right? We talk about, I mean, Best titanium watch. is like, the ultimate tool watch yes. metal, right? It's just performance. Why not put that on the performance version of yeah. the Submariner, essentially? Um, I would love it. I would love to see that. Well, and you're a big Sea Dweller guy. My favorite modern Sea Dweller is the Sea Dweller 40 mil Exactly. Ceramic bezel. Fully graduated bezel. No, yeah. no yes. Cyclops, even though I'm not Cyclops averse, but like if they just did that watch in titanium. In titanium that was, yes. no, that's what I was that's so what I was cool. envisioning. Yeah. It would be kind of like, I mean, if they did some red text on there, I'd love it Ooh. too. Kind of like Pelagos 39 yeah. vibes. Ooh. I think that would be super that cool. Would be, that would uh, be amazing. It's, not gonna, it's probably not going to Like Ripley says, I do feel like it's a little too cool. Right, for, they're not uh, going to go down in size. They had the idea. You know, they were like, someone floated it in the meeting and they're like, yeah, but that's going to just break the internet. Like, right. taper, taper it off. We're going to go play with the sizes for another two decades and then, <laughs> then we'll give the public what they want. So we, speaking of titanium, to branch off a little bit, okay. not totally, but a little bit. Um, maybe not so much of a prediction, something I'd like to see. I've talked about it before, Titanium Explorer. Mm. Ooh. I could see that being That'd a be cool. really nice offering as well. Again, I don't think it's something that I'm calling, I'm expecting to see at Watches and Wonders this year, but we're talking about the inclusion of titanium and doing more offerings with the metal. I think a Titanium Explorer would be a really cool move. That would be really sweet. I think a Titanium Explorer would be great. And I also think what? if they put a ceramic bezel on the Explorer, it would be it would be very different, but it would be an interesting way to separate it from, like right now it's kind of like, eh, it's an Oyster Perpetual with the sporty dial. Put a ceramic bezel on it, black ceramic bezel, all of a sudden it looks way different. Right. Uh, then you could also trickle it into the Explorer 2 line if you wanted to do that vibe, but hmm. it would be a way to differentiate it more. Yeah. Because it, it, it is pretty similar to kind of- What size would they come out with? 
Oh, I'm thinking, yeah, like the 40 would yeah. be great. Yeah, 3940, somewhere around there would be good. Um, true, but honestly, I'd like to see it anywhere. 36, right. I'd be all about it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, titanium. Cool. I love titanium, so. Titanium's grown on me a lot. I'm they excited to see where so. they'll go with it, yeah. you know? They did the Yacht Master. The mm -hmm. case back of the deep seas are titanium. Yes. They've so got this They have the deep new sea. deep sea, yeah. Right, that's, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I guess so in years to come, there'll probably be more titanium offerings, but. Uh, yeah, I would like to see the, the sea dweller in titanium. Yeah, nice. in 2024, though. Oh, in 20, wow. I'd like to see it in 2024, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, a lot of brands really are kind of tapping into that titanium train, so it'll be curious to see if they expand on it. Wow. Lots of predictions here on our end. I guess this is my last call. Do you guys have any other like bold predictions for the sake of 2024 and Rolex watches? Um, okay, non-Daytona chronograph. Ooh, oh. I'm hoping, I don't that's know why bold. I'm on, it's bold, that's, Brandon. That's crazy. <laughs> I, um, I, I don't know why I'm on this rose gold train. You guys know I love a King Midas. Ooh. Bring oh. out a rose gold King Midas. That would be my like dream. A new oh. King Midas. That is very bold. I would, please God. That's, yeah, it would be nice. I'd like to see it. Well, those no. are good, but I want to know. What do you guys think? Yes. I want to hear your predictions. Load up the comments. Please. What's coming this, in 2024 yes. from Rolex? This like, is, this our is one just a few. Chance yes. to kind of like take this conversation over to the comments. Let us know. What did you like that we shared? What do you agree yeah. with? What do you disagree with? What did we miss? What, what do you want to see? Bold, crazy prediction. You're that not necessarily the... expecting. Yeah. What would you like? Rainbow gem set off catalog sea dweller. Yes. There you that's, go. That's I mean, the stuff we want to oh, hear. Tutti Frutti Yacht Master, right? <laughs> well, they already did the full baguette sea dweller, yes. which was like however many million dollars that like one of one thing with like baguettes yes. around the Rehaw. Yeah. Make it rainbow at this point. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take the opportunity. Rose Gold Submariner. Okay. Whoa. Wow. Let's see it. Wow. Whoa. That would be See? wild. Would there be a case back display on this thing for some oh, random reason? Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. No, no. Probably not. Okay, no. I just, but come I'm, on. I'm satisfied with only the rose gold <laughs> Submariner. We don't have to go too crazy. Okay, you guys, this yeah. is so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for kind of loading up with all of the predictions and the ideas. It's always fun to be together. I do really appreciate the thoughtfulness. and. Another year has come and gone. So thank you guys for all of your thoughtful contributions over the course of all of our content. So we appreciate you guys tuning in as well. Be sure to like preview all of the Bob's Watches social channels, our website as always as the year wraps up and new watches and releases come to be. So until next time, everybody, be well.